We were three women with a different theoretical and practical background who took the initiative to this study. And we are Kjellfrid Enge. Kjellfrid is a teacher with particular knowledge in low vision teaching. She's a counselor and a light therapist. Hanne Halset, she's a nutritionist, and my name is Grete Rinning. I'm a communicologist. It's not a communist. <laughs> uh, it's in, within communication. I'm a social worker and, uh, and a light therapist. Our study included 10 children from the age of 9 to 11, and it lasted for five weeks and we obtained an average improvement in reading of 36.6%. And in the following, I'll tell you how. Before we started our study, all of us had, through our work, met children who struggle in their everyday life in school. Kjellfrid is a teacher and she meets them every day. Uh, the official figures tell us that between 5 and 10% of the population have serious reading and writing problems. <coughs> and as we all know, this has a tremendous influence on the child and its family, the school and the whole society. It makes a big impression on you to meet a child who struggles because of reading and writing. The three of us knew that we, in our individual working areas, have effective tools when it comes to helping <coughs> these children. And since we all have a holistic viewpoint, we believe that the brain and every cell in the body are integrated and that putting different tools together will give a synergistic effect. So we therefore decided to join our forces and we started planning for a study combining our different tools. We wanted to validify our hypothesis through this study. In the following, I'll use the word study and project synonymous in my lecture. We made a description of our project. We applied for financing through a Norwegian organization who financed research projects and studies within the health and rehabilitation area. Our application was accepted and we started the work. Our first job was to find a target group. It was not as easy as we thought. We represent a new way of thinking and we are not part of the mainstream. We contacted a couple of schools but with no success. But luckily enough, Kjellfri's daughter is also a teacher and she contacted her schoolmaster and in the spring 2007 we were allowed to present our study for the parents in her class. Eight children from sixth grade were interested in participating, plus a girl from a parallel class and the little brother of one of the children. Nine of the children were 11 years old and the little brother was nine years. It was not necessary with a dyslexia diagnosis in our study. In that respect, the headline in the conference program is wrong. As long as the children and their parents felt that reading and writing skills were not good enough, that was and that there was a potential for improvement, that was good enough for us. We had been planning for 12 children and now we had 10 who were interested in participating. One of the boys in sixth grade was, however, a good reader and writer. Despite of that, he and his mother strongly wanted him to take part in the project since he was hyperactive and had a poor ability to concentrate. We accepted this applicant because the important thing for us was that the child and the parents believed there was a genuine potential for improvement in the student's situation in school. We wanted to involve the parents in our study. Working with children of this age, we find that very important. Our study was partly carried out within an educational frame. We wanted the children and their parents to learn and understand how they themselves can influence on their ability to learn and concentrate. I'm sure you know the metaphor, give a man a fish and he feels satisfied that day, teach him how to fish and he can feel satisfied for the rest of his life. 
The children's participation in our project lasted for five weeks and in addition to that there were informative meetings for teachers and parents respectively, both before and after this period. The highlight of the project for the participants was a weekend for children and parents at Bökebangen Guest and Activity Center south of Oslo. And during my lecture, I will describe the purpose of our study and different elements involved and how we use these elements to the benefit of the children. I will also describe how we carried through the study and the final results. The children, their parents and ourselves were pleased with the results and our expectation was that this should be of interest to many. However, we were wrong. At the end of my lecture, I will therefore, if we have time, uh, I will invite you all to share some thoughts and reflections on this. Is this a phenomenon you recognize? And if so, how can we meet this? The purpose of our study was to achieve a measurable improvement in reading and writing based on the school's own test. And it is called the Karlsten test. Furthermore, we agreed on another thing. The children should enjoy being part of our study. We want them then to feel joy and contentment. These children are often met with negative attitudes and their school performance is looked upon as a problem, which again has a strong influence on their self-confidence and this again influences on their ability to learn. The negative focus on children who struggle in school is very stressing for them and stress is a negative factor when it comes to learning. There were three main elements or tools in the project and the three were colored light stimulation, diet and nutrition and different activities stimulating brain and body. And I'll start with a description of the various tools. For this audience, it's not necessary to explain why color light stimulation is suitable for the actual purpose. However, it was important to explain that to the organization where we applied for financing and for the target group and their parents. The educational system and the medical profession do not accept the results of previous studies involving color light stimulation. However, we refer to empirical proof done with a similar target group by the optometrists John Downing and Jacob <coughs> Lieberman and the work done by the med medical doctor T. H. Eames at Boston University who found that children with learning difficulties had a smaller visual field and a bigger blind spot compared to children with no learning difficulties. The color light stimulation was to be carried out with the photon wave light machine from Leona Fermer in Belgium. <coughs> and we were following her color recipe for dyslexia, parasympathetic dominant and sympathetic dominant. <coughs> so the colors were ruby, then a combination of yellow and green and indigo for the parasympathetic and for the sympathetic dominant it was uh, ruby combination of turquoise and blue and indigo. <coughs> Tool number two was diet and nutrition. Hanne, our nutritionist, has considerable competence when it comes to how the food we eat influence on our mood behavior and ability to concentrate and learn. For her it was of great importance to teach the children and their parents in a fun and engaging way and to give them an understanding for the fact that the food we eat is transformed into brain food. She wanted to show them that nutritious food can be fun to make, can taste good and that it is brain friendly. The reason for this is that the blood sugar balance has a great impact on mood and our ability to concentrate and learn due to the brain's preference for a stable glucose level. This directly implies that a high intake of sugar and refined carbohydrates 
affects mental performance severely. Not only does it cause uneven glucose levels in the brain, but it also depletes B vitamins and minerals that are vital for the brain's information transmission. The brain is also dependent on sufficient availability of protein, that is amino acids, and essential fatty acids from food in order to perform well. A vast number of the products available on the market today contains large amounts of hidden sugar and therefore provide poor nutritional value. We believe that parents should be informed about the importance of proper nutrition in order to give the children their best ability to succeed in school. They can improve their children's ability to concentrate and learn by serving nutritious food at home and in their school lunches. During the project, we recommended a normal, healthy diet. We focus on low sugar, whole natural foods, and lots of <coughs> fruits and vegetables. For children struggling at school, food intolerance may be important to check out. This was not included in this project, however, due to its complexity and need for individual consideration. We are inspired by the holistic brain research of the Finnish Matti Bergström when it comes to how to stimulate brain and body through different activities. A balanced stimulation of the brain is crucial for good learning ability and creativity as it is for a good balanced life, he claims. Just for the record, personally I do not have any scientific competence regarding the brain. I am only a brain user. Through his research, he has come to the conclusion that it is important to stimulate the whole brain. He states that the brain exists between two worlds, the outer world and the inner world, and that the brain is a link between the two. The brain, he says, can be split up functionally into three parts, the brain stem, brain cortex and the limbic system. The brain cortex is responsible for our interactions with our environment, the outer world. The cortex is an organized structure where logic and reasoning prevail. In our everyday life, there is much focus on the outer world, how much we achieve and how efficient and busy we are. We move fast, are mentally active and we have a focus on doing. Matti Bergström claims that today's school systems are overstimulating the cortex. The brainstem is a part dealing with signals from or sending signals to the inner organic world. He believes that it is here our basic vitality, chaos and creativity lies. The brainstem gets information from our inner world. This is more a question of being. Remember, we are human beings, not human doings. The cortex and the brainstem communicate with each other with the help from the limbic system. The inner and outer worlds meet here for comparison and negotiation. In order for the brain, body and ourselves as human people to function optimally, it is important to find a balance between these factors. So, in order to stimulate the brain in a balanced way, we planned for the use of hearing, movement and touch in play and activities. And the planned activities were stimulate diagonal movements, like crawling, stimulate internal and external muscles by letting the children do alternating slow and quick exercises, reading stories and fairy tales aloud, and listening to music. In September 2007, the time had come to put our plans into practice. Ten children and their parents came for their initial tests and information. Well, in the start, the children were tested as follows. It was a Carlsten test, as mentioned before, uh, regarding reading and writing skills, the visual field and blind spot test, and a questionnaire inspired by John Downing. 
As a result of the latter, we established whether the child was sympathetic or parasympathetic dominated. This decided which program the child should follow according to Leona Fermer's color recipe chart. The parents were given information about what body and mind need to achieve good learning results. The information was kept simple, putting <coughs> emphasis on which types of food one should and should not include in one's daily diet. For the following five weeks, the children got colored light stimulation for a 10 minutes period at least three times a week, 17 times altogether. The light stimulation took part in a room next to the children's classroom and the teacher was giving the children their treatment. And the first three were detox treatments according to Leona Fermé's color recipe chart. Start with yellow green, then turquoise blue and indigo. Of the 17 treatments, they also had three times with so-called rainbow. The children, they liked the, rain, uh, the, the light stimulation in general and they loved the rainbow. When we told them that today you'll have rainbow stimulation, they were so enthusiastic. Some find it very easy to establish whether a person is uh, parasympathetic dominated or sympathetic dominated. I do not. As already stated, we used a questionnaire inspired by John Downing in this respect, and even so, we were not always certain whether we had the right conclusion. After two weeks, we measured the visual field again, and if the progress was not according to expectation, we changed the stimulation for some of the children from parasympathetic to sympathetic, or vice versa. After two weeks, we went for the weekend at the Guest and Activity Center. Ten children and 13 parents participated. The purpose of this weekend was the same as before, to strengthen learning abilities in an enjoyable way. The children reveled in lively activities like relay races, ball games, frisbee, walking on stilts, cops and robbers, etc. They were also doing slower activities like creeping and crawling about or balancing exercises. There was also time to strengthen focus on the inner being by listening to stories and music, recognizing sounds, etc. <coughs> Making the participants conscious of the importance of diet was also a central theme for the weekend. With a slideshow and other visual aids like Lego building blocks, the nutritionist was able to illustrate how the brain functions and what it needs to function well. The parents were given a 90-minute follow-up lecture with more relevant information about the relation and interaction between diet and learning. Learning by doing is a well-known method and this weekend it was very central. The children as well as parents took part in preparing some of the food. And of course the children got colored light stimulation two to three times that weekend. Back home after a most enjoyable weekend, the children continued with colored light stimulation for the remaining period of the project. In some aspects, the project was not carried out completely as planned, and that is for the indoor-outdoor activities stimulating brain and body. The plan was that the teacher should include this in her daily contact with the children, but the time schedule turned out to be too tight at school. On the other hand, in their timetable, they have two to three lessons with physical exercise per week. And in addition to that, most children at this age in Norway are physically active in their free time. But unfortunately, thanks to computer games, this is gradually changing for the worse in our country as well. But if we slightly neglected our plans, for indoor-outdoor activities stimulating brain and body, we made up for it during the weekend at the activity center. The children were tested with Chil Carlsten's reading and writing tests prior to, as well as at the end of the study, and this test <coughs> is, re uh, is recognized and frequently used in Norway. 
The average improvement in speed was, as I said, 36.6%, with a range from minus 8.7. I will put on some comments on that later on. And uh, it varied to an improvement of 85%. The following gives a presentation of results from the test and I'll add some comments and observations made by the parents. In addition to showing reading speed per minute, the test gives a picture of skills when it comes to understanding text content. In the column, understanding number of errors, uh, you read, for instance, three of eight. That means that the child has read as far as the task number eight and that he has three wrong and five correct answers. It's like a multiple choice test where the student has to choose the correct word. And the column dictation errors shows that skills in writing words and sentences shows their skills in writing words and sentences correctly after dictation. Children who struggle with concentration and memory have problems with dictation. And there we have student number one. Uh, as I said, uh, <coughs> he did not have any improvement, but this was a little boy of nine years old. His speed of reading uh, changed for the worst. Um, but at the final test, there was a great deal of noise and disturbance in the classroom, and he may have been disturbed by that. The same boy read 105 words per minute in Carlson's test by, done by the school at the closing of our study. So the test the school used was one class level more difficult than the one we used. This supports our theory that the students' performance had been negatively uh, affected during the test. Uh, and the parents comment on this boy was that coordination was better, awareness, awareness was also a bit better. Student number two has an improvement on 37.5% and uh, <coughs> the parents comment was that he has a less headache now than before, he sleeps more easily at night, less anger and negative thoughts now, much better in English and mother thinks reading is improving more or is improved, more positive attitude to schoolwork, better concentration and awareness and families more conscious about diet. Student number three, uh, he has an improvement of uh, 66% and uh, the parents said that uh, the child is more focused now and more mature during the autumn, better motivation and quicker now to get started with homework alone. He is more interested in healthy food and has more stable moods. Then we come to student number four, which she, she's a girl and uh, she's better at reading and has much more fluency. Her improvement is 17.3%. She remembers better what has been read. She finds expression of anger and emotions easier. And family feels they are wiser about diet and nutrition. Um, her visual field, though, did not improve <coughs> during the test, but uh, we took a new test in May, and uh, that showed improvement, and she did not have any light stimulation in that period. So that's interesting. Oh, that was not very easy to see. Anyway, this is the left eye, and it shows an no improvement of, from uh, com if you compare before and after the project period, but in May, she has an uh, improvement. And uh, it's the same for the right eye. Uh, student number five, he has an improvement of 31%. And uh, there the parents say that he's not so worn down or ill this autumn. He reads better and English <coughs> is improved. Then we come to... Um, student number six and then we have the same problem. Uh, anyway, it shows an improvement. No. Now we have student number six. So this was before and uh, 
this was after. Not fantastic, but uh, good improvement. Yeah. And the parents say that the child has more energy after school and has more positive thinking. He has better control over aggression and better coordination. He's also better at dealing with conflicts. And the family is more interested in the quality of the fats they eat. And they eat nuts and seeds. <coughs> And the student number six had an increase of 35%. Then there is student number seven. The increase is uh, 72%. This is a girl and she's more willing to read than before and she has a better attitude towards schoolwork. And the family is more interested in what is healthy to eat and they eat more salads and cereals. Oh, no. Back to that. Uh, student number eight. Despite the fact that the girl's visual field hardly improved, this student has the best improvement when it comes to reading and writing. Her visual field <coughs> was tested electronically. And doing this, it's difficult to check whether the child is focused all the time or not. So we have a feeling that we, when we do it um, uh, manually, manually it's easier to check if the child is focused. So one hypothesis is that the first test gives a too good result. And our second is that this girl, number eight, she's severely suffering from scoliosis and has been through several operations. And metal has been operated into her back. It must be a very stressing situation for her, uh, mentally as well as physically. She was not able to move freely the way her friends do, and she's smaller than the other girls in her class. So could the stress be the reason why her visual field has not increased, but that the light and the project as such has done the job within the limited visual field? Whatever the reason may be, it's obvious that a positive change has occurred. And the parents say that the daughter reads faster and enjoys reading more in spare time. Uh, student number nine, increase of 29%, and he feels more comp competent in English. He's more tired and ready for bed in the evening the, than before. Student number 10, this is a boy who did not fit in according to our original plans. He was a good reader and writer, but was hyperactive. And so he only had an uh, improvement of 2%. So this was uh, his uh, visual field when we started. And this is uh, at the end of the project. Can I ask why you got two, is that two green fields on it? That's the form field. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The outer green. They didn't have white. Yeah. Okay. Now, <coughs> actually, this was yellow, but it uh, comes out oh. green. So. Uh, No, we used white. Okay. Yeah, so it, it was supposed to be white. Okay. Yeah. Um, this boy, he liked light stimulation and it became calmer. He had less anger during periods of light treatment. He read a lot before, but increased number of books read now. And he became less afraid of the dark. We had our final test on October 9th, and every year, the school has their <coughs> test performed shortly after that date with the same type of test, namely Carlsten. Eight of the children belong to the same class and we therefore had the opportunity to compare these eight children um, with the rest of the class. So here we can see that from 2005 to 2006, in other words, before we started our project, our eight students had an increase of 8.5% or improvement of 8.5% in a year. That's the speed of reading. And the rest of the class, uh, they had an improvement of 17.3%. 
But then, uh, after we had finished our project, we can see that our eight students, they had an improvement in reading of 75%. And strangely enough, the other students, they had an increase of 47.4%. And that's interesting, I think. Yeah. So how is that? Is that because uh, you, you put some energy into a class and, and they, we focus on, on this? So, uh, yeah. And then the year after that, uh, our students, they had an increase of 13.4% uh, and uh, the rest of the class, 9%. And then we have another comparison because there were two classes. Uh, we don't have the figures from 2007, but uh, we have from 2006 and class A had an average uh, speed, um, speed of reading of 78 words per minute and class B had 116. Uh, our class A in 2008 they had 155 words per minute so they had almost reached uh, the other class they had 159. We started out with a hypothesis saying that a combination of colored light, diet, nutrition and different activities stimulating brain and body would give a synergistic effect on reading and writing skills. With the blessing of the nutritionist, I'm allowed to say the following. The duration of the study was too short for the brain to change the composition of essential fatty acids. The most important contribution to the result was a more balanced blood sugar, sugar because of more frequent and balanced meals. As earlier mentioned, the various activities stimulating body and mind were not carried through quite according to our plan. Colored light stimulation, however, was following the original plan. We obtained a measurable improvement in the children's reading and writing skills, but whether this is due to the synergistic effect is not quite possible to say. There is, however, one thing the three of us agree on. The colored light has played an important role in our study. It was quite interesting to observe the parents' attitudes. Before the study, they were quite hesitating when it came to light stimulation. They believed, however, in the positive influence of the other two tools and therefore decided to take part in the study. After the study, they clearly expressed that they had changed their minds. We received so many positive comments from both parents and children on the project as such. All the participants were exceptionally satisfied with the project and as you have seen, the parents reported clear progress from their child also in other areas. Children as well as parents expressed that the experience of being part of the project was fun and informative. And remember, one of the aims of the project was in fact just that of being enjoyable for both young and old. We think that this is part of the story too. We believe that positive changes are dependent on a change in state of mind. Our children enjoyed these five weeks. It was a lot of fun and joy, and they experienced that they were not the only ones who struggled in school. It feels good to be part of a we when the frame and the focus is positive. So what happened after the closing of the study? Not much. Media in Norway quite often focus on a large number of children who struggle with reading and writing in school. We were therefore quite confident that our work would be met with interest since we had focused on that, but we were wrong. We think that our way of meeting these problems can be a useful supplement to the current debate. The teachers and the school's competence and way of working are central issues, but the picture cannot be complete without including the child's own ability to learn. 
In our opinion, the project shows that learning ability is strengthened by methods and therapies mentioned above. Consciousness and awareness which developed during the project were also significant elements. Both adults and children became aware of how they themselves could influence their learning ability through everyday choices and preferences. In this way, the responsibility for a child's learning capacity could be shared between all the involved parties and not put entirely onto the teachers and the school authorities. When the report from our study was finished, we sent a press report to all the newspapers in Oslo and the areas around. We contacted the top administrative leader for the school authorities in Oslo. We sent emails to the school's parent organizations there was no interest. After some months, a health magazine. Just press the key. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any key? Any hmm? key? Just press yeah, I'm, I'm pressing. <coughs> hmm. <coughs> and now we can take. Uh, we, um, yeah, a health magazine wrote an article about our study, but nothing happened. And we know that our study is untraditional. We know that most people react with surprise when they hear about colored light stimulation, but still, despite all this, we expected some interest. So I don't know if you have the time for that, but uh, what I would have liked us to do was to share some thoughts as to how we can make the world more interested. Uh, Phyllis, the time is 5.30 and I don't think there is any time for that. Okay, thank you very much.